back to Midnight O2 Season One, Episode Sixteen. This is your host Amy. How was your day? Are you ready for tonight's episode? Well, lately I have been following U.S. news, and I know what's going on in the states. A lot of people want to send their children back to school, and a lot of people don't. But I feel like I'm not the right person to talk about it. So today, I have my friend on the show to talk about her experiences and perspectives as a teacher, and her name is Vivian Cho. She's currently teaching in LA, California. She's also a recent graduate, so this is really nothing she imagined when she was teaching. And let's hear what she has to say. Let's welcome Vivian. Hi, everyone. I'm Vivian.、Um, I'm gonna be teaching、uh, in a school up north in LA. Um, and I will be teaching a fourth grade dual language Mandarin program, which means it's fifty fifty English Mandarin.、Um, and I recently graduated from Pepperdine Grad School.、Uh, got my master's in elementary teaching. Also got my teaching credentials, and it was a eleven months accelerated program. During this time, I did、um, a lot of student teaching. And undergrad, I did two years of student teaching as well, and this is my first time having my own classroom, and we just started this week actually. So yeah. Wow, how was the first week of class? Um, a lot of it is kind of a mess right now, just with COVID and everything. Um, it, they're still struggling to get everything together,、uh, district wise,、um, mm-hmm. and things are just very tentative. You know, it's hard to make solid plans because everything was changing all the time during summer. So a lot of the times it was like, oh, we don't know <laughs> what to tell you, or like if they do know, it's like, oh, but、mm-hmm. we can't tell you yet. So it's just kind of like、um, going off, kind of on the fly, and you know, it,、mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a mess right now.、Um, and there was not enough training provided.、Uh, For a lot of teachers, in terms of the online stuff,、um, so that's been an adjustment period as well. So it's both adjustment for families, students, and teachers alike. I see. Are you teaching every day in person from Monday to Friday?、Um, we're doing、uh, over on online actually. So it's a Zoom with a few other platforms, such as you know Nearpod. Class Dojo, Schoology,、um, and it serves as ways to like connect you with parents without actually giving out your phone number or like、mm-hmm. interactive activities.、Um, but we have async and synchronous、um, times that、mm-hmm. the district mandates us, and I think、uh, I think it was like two hundred forty minutes of. Synchronous or something like that, and then async, and it's just kind of up to you to see how you want to schedule it. As long as you hit the minimum, I could be wrong on those numbers. I would need to check, but、mm-hmm. something along those lines, yeah. I see. So you haven't actually met your students in person, am I right? I've only met one of them when they came to pick up、um, the materials, but no,、mm-hmm. I get to meet them on Wednesday with their parents. We're doing a meet and greet after the principals do orientation. Right. So you just won't be seeing them and teaching them in person anytime soon, from what you know. Yeah, from what I know. I mean, things are subject to change.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, it's a it's a huge debate, controversial debate. Right. Some parents want kids to go back to school because you know they have work, they don't have anyone to watch the kids,、um, they don't feel like the kids learn as well. And on the other hand, it's like, well, it's not safe for the kids to go back to school. You know. Right. So, yeah, it's just kind of up in the air.、Um, they're hoping, I think, to go back in January, but obviously that depends on how the COVID situation is in、mm-hmm. the states. Right, that's like next year. Hmm.、Uh, yeah, I was curious about some of the conversations you had with parents. Did the parents say anything to you specifically, or、mm, just their concerns? To... Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it, it was a really quick adjustment period because. Um, back in March, we were teaching in person up until、uh, March seventeenth,、mm-hmm. I want to say,、um, and it was very sudden. Like that week, a lot of districts just decided to close down, and teachers were notified 
night of. Wow. Um, yeah, so, uh, like, during that time, teachers, like, we only had a few days to prepare for online for the rest of the semester or rest of the quarter or whatever, um, you know? Mm -hmm. And (laughs) so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's been so crazy. Um, yeah. (laughs) Wow. How are the kids doing over like Zoom or online materials? Do you think it's more difficult for them, right? Since they're still relatively young. Yeah. So for kindergarten, Oh my God, that was, <laughs> you can't imagine how, how kindergarten looks mm-hmm. like, like it's just, the kids don't know how to use the tech, you know, yeah. parents don't know how to use the tech a lot of times. And, you know, we're working with a lot of low income families, mm-hmm. um, that don't have the technology. So like the first few weeks we had just students that never showed up because they didn't have Wi-Fi or they didn't have Aww. computers or, um, you know, or like, they didn't have anything, anyone to watch the kids and make sure they were mm-hmm. getting on because they had to work two jobs. Like, it's just, it's it's been a lot. Um, so that's definitely a concern as well when it comes to teaching, mm-hmm. distance learning. It's like, where are these families going to get what they need? Right. Because from yeah. my, what I know is that I think Singapore government gives out, like, tablets to some of the schools and gives out them to like the kids so they could take home and have the technology but I'm assuming that we don't have the resources to do that with our children and classrooms right (laughs) well it really is dependent on the district and on the school Mm -hmm. uh for LA County so far it seems like uh we've been doing pretty well in terms of passing technology to families that need it if you request it Mm -hmm. Um, and it's their school laptops that you use in school so we're just like lending those out uh, two families that need it but then that the other like what comes with that is like what if they don't have steady wi-fi at home right like what is having the computer going to do for the mm-hmm. child or like if the child never got training and the parents never got training and you give them a laptop and they're just like okay now what <laughs> right yeah so yeah wow so I've been following the news in the States and some schools are actually uh, having the kids back in person. So teachers are teaching them, yeah, like in person. And I was wondering what your perspective on that is. <laughs> Oof, man, um, I'll try to keep it very PC. Um, <laughs> it's OK. Just say whatever you want. OK. Um, I mean, it's so quick. Like, it's so easy to like see how quick uh people view the teacher, you know, in mm-hmm. March, it was like, teachers deserve a raise, they're million, they should be millionaires, you know, they are such heroes, mm-hmm. and now it's like, we don't care if our teachers die trying to teach our kids in person, oh, we gosh. just want them to go back in person, and you know, um, one of the schools, uh, I forget which state it is, I want to say, ah, maybe it was Florida, mm-hmm. um, but they all went back in person, um, at the school, and <laughs> a bunch of kids and teachers got COVID, um, and they shut the sc- whole school down. And it was just like they didn't social distance, masks were mandated, you know. Um, and it's just like they don't even consider that. Like, sure, kids may be asymptomatic, but mm-hmm. what if they bring it home to a grandparent? You know, what if they bring it home to their uh, mm-hmm. little brother or mother who's autoimmune, like. Uh, you know, more at risk or mm-hmm. something like that, you know? right. um, and what about teachers, you know, if they get COVID, do we get compensated? Who's going to teach the kids? Um, you know, so it's just, it's just, I think it's a horrible idea mm-hmm. as much as I would love to meet my kids in person because it is just easier to build rapport with them and teach mm-hmm. them like that. Um, gosh, I mean, unless we have all the equipment needed, all the funding needed, uh, I don't think that's a good idea at all. And education funding, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's it's not very valued in the States. And the first thing they want to cut always when it comes to budget and with the government mm-hmm. is education. So it's just like you can't expect us to go back in person without all the right equipment and the funding and the support. It sounds like a very complicated issue, and there's a lot of factors involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, how are your other um, friend classmates doing? Because they, you know, you guys just recently graduated. And uh-huh. I bet they're also teaching. Are they like having similar situations with you? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Um, you know, some some have it worse. You know, like they have, let's say, twenty five kids last uh, back in March um, with a different class, obviously, and maybe only eight people come. Mm-hmm. With eight students log in, or like people that work, uh, my colleagues that work in even lower income districts. Uh, that is a huge, huge struggle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even that, like us graduating and trying to find jobs, half of us still don't have jobs. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 quite the year to uh, be a first year teacher. <laughs> yeah, like as a recent graduate, this is really probably nothing you've ever imagined, right? When you wanted to yeah. be a teacher. Yeah, definitely not. Because, you know, one of the few things, well, not not one of the few things, but one of my like top traits, I guess, as a teacher is building rapport with kids really mm-hmm. quickly. But it's just like, how do I do that when we're not in person? Right? Right. Um, and definitely, you know, it's, it's grad school, we got our master's degree, we want to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Yet, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's like a little a small, small, small concern in comparison to everything that's going on right now, so. Yeah, I heard another teacher said that um, she's always willing to help her kids, like help the children, the students, but not willing to die for the job. And I was thinking to myself, that's so sad. Yeah, Yeah. is there anything else that you wish more people would know about the current situation that, like, other people don't talk about from a teacher's perspective, specifically? Um, I think a huge thing is, like, people don't understand that we are adjusting on the fly. Hmm. Um, everyone's just like, oh, or, like, they'll say, oh, teachers uh, sit around and do nothing. Like, they don't know how much work goes into online planning, you know, doing async, synchronous, learning all the different platforms, all the lesson planning, and switching from all in-person lessons to online. It's mm-hmm. very different a lot of work and I don't think people understand how much work actually goes into that and it's not just like we're working from like nine to five and then once school lets out we're done no Mm -hmm. we we still have late you know lesson planning um in meetings you know trying to help students meet their needs in school and differentiating to the student um I think really just people need to give teachers some some grace some you know Mm -hmm understanding <laughs> that uh right. this is all new for us too and we have our own families too we are people as well mm-hmm. like, yeah we want to be in person with your kids but we also want what's best for your kids as well um and but they just have to be understanding with us like there's you can't demand so much from us and expect this to be the same as in person because it won't be mm-hmm. you know but just know that we're all trying our best um yeah, a little respect goes a long <laughs> way for teachers. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Vivian, thank you for sharing. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, of course. I'm glad to be on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, have a good night. So that was my conversation with teacher Vivian, and I hope our policymakers and politicians could think more. I wish they could think more when it comes to making decisions about sending children back to school. And let's give more appreciation to all the teachers in the world who are teaching both in person and in class. And once again, have a good night.